Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. Today, as the title and thumbnail suggests, we're gonna have a look inside of our uh, 13B race engine. Right, welcome back. For those that may be new to the channel, thanks for clicking on the video. You might want to see a bit more about uh, 13B engine and what's inside of it, what makes it tick. A uh, bit of background. Car that it's coming out of is our uh, 1993 FD Mazda RX-7. Uh, let's have a video of it now running in 87, 160 mile an hour pass. Now I've done a significant amount of dyno pulls, racing and that on this engine, so while we had the transmission out, I wanted to also paint the engine bay, uh, so thought it was a great time to pull the engine down and actually have a look at it, make, everything, make sure everything's alright, the bearings, uh, seals and all that kind of stuff, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get the engine and transmission out and um, yeah, then we'll go through a bit of a detailed strip down of the engine and uh, have a look at any components that may be uh, an issue. So the engine is now out, uh, spins over freely. Like I said, there's nothing uh, nothing wrong with it, but I uh, just want to tear it down and make sure bearings are okay, everything's okay. And um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do now. So cue the time-lapse uh, and uh, we'll get it all apart and then run through it all. Time to lift this uh, rear plate off and take a look. Uh, all the other seals and that will be put over there on that tray, so. There we go. All right, we'll look at all this stuff later, but they're all in one piece, so that's good. And they will go. This is what I machine all the uh, engine parts up. It's gonna be hard to see, but I've got things here that say, Front and G is for gear, front, front to one, two, three, rear one, two, three, and the gear side. This is the gear side. Uh, so I will just put these one, two, three. I'm not sure which side was one, two, three when I machined these. So um, beautiful, everything's still got spring, which is great. These water seals are still all fine as well. These are cheap enough from, uh, you can get them from me, from Mr. Parts, that I don't need to reuse this stuff, but um, these are looking brand new. If I want to reuse them, I can. That wouldn't be a problem. Um, all right. I'm gonna take these seals out. Uh, and at least I know where they're 
coming from by using this designated tray anyway, so that's all good. I'm gonna try and not lose the apex seals, but we probably will. All right, I didn't, that's a good feat. I'll just dump them into here anyway. All right, that's all complete, beautiful. Uh, this side looks good as well. Mainly what I'm checking for here is see if anything's jammed in or anything, which it definitely is not, but I mean, yeah, like I said, <laughs> if it starts and runs, you generally ain't got no problem, so. Quick look at the rotors, they look fine. Uh, have brand new bearings in it, so you can see the bearing materials, that Babbitt or whatever coating is still pretty heavily on there. There's barely any wear on it, so that's really good. Alrighty, custom tools. Screw that in there. And away we go. Uh, this engine has got one day extra dowel here because this is the way it, it come. Um, so yeah, I just have to live with uh, one there. Whatever, don't really matter. Boop. See how tight that is. Beautiful. Just beautifully come off. Uh, that looks great. Yep. These still look absolutely brand new. No cracks in the spark plugs or anything. Beautiful. Yes, two for one. Beautiful. This looks great with my fingerprints all over it. Uh, can sit there and oil. Again, water seals all looking good. These all good. Yep. No worries, everything springs. Everything's good. Uh, front, front, front. Oh, I'm gonna lose it all like that. Of course it all goes flying out. All good, could put it back together now if I wanted to. All right, so engine is out <laughs> um, and so is the trans. Trans is going to PTC on uh, on Tuesday, I think. Um, so I'll probably by the time you're watching this, it'll already be there. Uh, so they're gonna go through that because of all the stuff I found in the sump. Um, just better to be safe than sorry. So they'll be going through all that, obviously we've got you know, most of the car disassembled here, got the engine apart, which you just saw. Uh, what I am planning to do all now also is this red engine bay's gotta go. So at the moment, we've got a white car on the outside, a charcoal metallic gray on the inside, black underneath, and then we've got this clown red engine bay. So uh, people that remember back on the original full boost one when we um, painted this stuff, the reason why I did this is because I was originally either gonna paint it that, that really nice red, um, that metallic -y Mazda 6 red, or I was gonna wrap it in like a matte um, candy red sort of thing, and then we obviously went uh, the way of the white instead. So um, the red, while I've got the engine out, while I've got the trans out, I just saw a perfect opportunity to actually right this wrong and, uh, and yeah, get this sorted. So I was just going to sand it uh, quickly by hand and then just blow over it with um, color. Uh, and then I was gonna paint strip it all and prime it and do all that. So I've just sanded a little part here and that's roughed up really well. So I think I'll just proceed with the sanding. This is just the engine bay. I don't really care about um, it being 
a showstopper of a job so I think if I just sand it by hand and rough it up enough uh, that should be enough to uh, blow some color over and a couple of coats of clear and then all good. Alrighty, engine bay has been sprayed, so time for the big reveal. And here it is. It's a bit dark in here because obviously I film everything at uh, night uh, and that fluoro and that one aren't working properly still, so it's um, directly underneath it, but it's a bit dark. But this is the color that is inside, uh, inside the car. And yeah, it's, it's just, um, it's some kind of gray. I've been asked about what this color is quite a few times and posts I've put up on social media. So just on that, uh, for those that obviously watch videos on YouTube, thank you. Anyone subscribing, thanks a lot. That's really great too. Uh, I post a lot of stuff on uh, my Instagram, or whatever, and Facebook account during the week and probably ahead of projects. So um, if you do want to um, keep in touch on what we're doing and ask questions or anything, uh, yeah, follow us over there on uh, Broomie's Garage on Facebook or Paul Broomie on Instagram and uh, you can see this kind of stuff, even little hints and stuff and behind the scenes stuff before the videos come out. So this color I've been asked about quite a fair few times since posting the engine bay color uh, and people asking what color it is. And um, yeah, I don't actually have an answer. So it's actually this motor spray or whatever. Um, it's like a 1K sort of thing. So it's just the, the paint uh, you add, you thin it down by like 80%, you spray it on and then you put, while it's still wet, you put your um, 2K clear with harder in it and it all sets rock hard sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, this color, as you can see here, it just says uh, mist tint. And what's funny is that color that's on top of the lid doesn't really represent the color. Once the paint hits the metal, it, it, it looks very, silvery I think almost like with a little bit of um, like a silvery with almost like a little bit of red red sort of through it like a, a very yeah a very pewter sort of silver so to speak uh, and then when it's on the car it's a really really nice looking gray color um, inside the car it's a bit hard to see how um, the color I, I really do like it a lot and then seeing it on the engine bay and in the light uh, it's really making me want to actually paint this thing all this color so what i'm going to have to do while i've still got some of it in the tin which isn't much to be honest is go back to old mate where i got the paint from and just say do you know what this is <laughs> because um yeah I, i'd really like to possibly get the color again it's it's a mist tint it's obviously they've tried to you know they've, they've made a liter of it for whoever to on a some kind of car to do it and the paint shops bought it back and said this is not quite what it's meant to be, but it's exactly sort of what I want to do for, for the RX-4. So yeah, the um, engine bay looks good. And uh, yeah, I guess on now to looking at uh, what the plans are with the engine and looking some of the stuff in the engine a bit closer. All right, I've got the front, this is the front plate. Um, as you can see by, there it is, front of the engine. And we'll just whack it down there. Um, now I, the rest of the engine, we're not gonna to have to go through because the rest of the engine, quite honestly, is basically completely immaculate. So this engine was never new to me. When I bought the RX-7 13 years ago, it had been refreshed um, and none of the plates had been lapped or anything, it had just been put together. So it had a little bit of what's known as step wear, where the side, you know, the corner seals basically put a, a, a trace around um, the, the face because they're wearing on that face and, and they leave a slight uh, groove there after time. Normally you can visually see the groove, but if your fingernail doesn't pick it up and you run a mic over it, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't affect it at all. Once it gets too deep, that uh, groove, uh, you have to lap the plates, which is um, something you may have heard about where plates are lapped and they're, they're, they're ground basically on a machine um, and they're brought back to being completely flat again, then they might be nitrided, so they're hard. These plates have never been lapped, but uh, a side effect of running a lot of boost, and I'm not talking about 20 or 25 pound of boost or even 30, I'm talking about 40 pound of boost. Running a lot of boost um, will lead to step wear uh, where the combustion pocket is. And that's what we've got on, on this plate now. The, both sides of the center plate are starting to show little bits of step wear, and the rear plate's got a little bit, but the front plate's just a bit too far gone. By the step wear, what I mean is you can see this sort of trace all the way sort of around here, 
Um, and where you can see all the, all the marks you can see on here, they're nothing. As you can see, fingernail doesn't even grab at all um, on any of these marks whatsoever. But when you get to the marks over here, you can, I'll run my finger over it and you'll see that they're grabbing and they're, it's, they're really sort of, they're really deep here. Now we could have this, um, we could have this lapped and machine, it'll be okay, okay again. But every time you take material off this, um, it just left, lessens its life. Considering that plate is still in good condition, especially after it gets lapped and it can be put into an engine back into some, you know, long service uh, kilometers again, considering I'm gonna go billet one day, probably eventually anyway, um, I think it's best now just to put a billet plate on the front of the engine and this plate can just live to find another day in, in someone else's engine at some point in time as a really high quality spare once it's lapped. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna put a billet plate in it. Talk to Simon from Promos already. They have some Billet Pro front plates being prepared this week. So that's it, we are going billet. We're gonna put a billet front plate in it and it will replace this. Um, yeah, they're based on a Cosmo port, so they're slightly bigger than this, but my intake manifold is also based on a Cosmo um, port anyway, so it means it'll line up exactly to that. Uh, what I'm probably gonna do is just leave it completely untouched. I won't put the little um, Tic Tac secondary bridge port in it. I'll just leave it as the, the huge single Cosmo extend port. I've got the semi PP in there already. Don't really see the need of having the, the PP and the secondary bridge port, so um, it won't affect anything, it'll be fine. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's that. So we will get a billet plate soon enough and um, I think uh, that'll be the next part. All right, so that's the engine. Everything looks all good. Uh, working on getting that uh, billet front plate for it. Uh, I, we don't need a billet front plate, I guess. Uh, I could just go and buy another cast plate, but cast plates are around, I think, $1,800 dollars or so to two thousand um, dollars or thereabouts maybe only even sixteen hundred seven hundred dollars something like that but regardless of that case that the billet plate is i'm not 100 percent sure i think it's around three grand or just under three grand so um say the the cast plate's two grand say the billet plate's three grand uh you know it's not really worth going and buying another cast plate for us you know that then for us, you know, possibly to have other wear issues down the track and then having to buy another cast plate after 100 passes or 200 passes or something like that if you start running 50 pound of boost or something. So what happens by buying the billet plate is we buy the billet plate once and it's three grand and we take the hit, but then if that face, which is actually even harder than the factory one, that's why people run these billet plates as well, is the faces are actually harder than the factory uh, faces, so they will wear less. But if we did need to replace something on it, we can replace that whole face on the Billet Pro one, um, and it's it's very affordable to do so. Uh, so that's the main reason we're going billet. I mean, it's not uh, an entirely reliable as in like, oh, the cast one's gonna explode into a million pieces. It's more around cost management in the long term overall, it's just a better solution now to do this uh, than, than, yeah, than if we keep on going with the cast and having to machine it, whatever. So cast is still fast. You can definitely run fast, you know, we can, I think Major League with a 20B ran 6.1 or 6.2 or something uh, many, many years ago and was the fastest rotary sort of in the world and that was a cast, entirely cast engine. So it was the fastest rotor for a long, long time. So there's not, not, no one saying that you cannot go fast in cast engines. Um, that's just not true at all. You can go really fast in the cast engine, but at this point in time where we need to probably replace the front plate anyway, it just makes more sense to put a billet one in um, for, for long term. So uh, Trans, is, as I said, it's at, um, at PTC at the moment. So next week might have an update on the Trans or whatever, but uh, yeah, for now, this is where we're at. This will do it. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, talk to you next time.